Today's lesson is on angle measures and segment lengths. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are in the scale before we begin the lesson. Angles formed by intersecting lines have a special relationship to the related arcs formed when the lines intersect a circle. Today we will study angles and arcs formed by lines intersecting either within a circle or outside a circle. First, let's take a look at the angles formed by lines intersecting inside a circle. Theorem 12-13 states that the measure of an angle formed by two lines that intersect inside a circle is half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Since these lines intersect inside the circle, the measure of angle 1 will be half x degrees plus y degrees. Now let's take a look at angles formed by lines intersecting outside a circle. Theorem 12-14 states that the measure of an angle formed by two lines that intersect outside a circle is half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. In the first diagram, we have two secants that intersect outside the circle. So the measure of angle 1 will be x degrees minus y degrees divided by 2. In the second diagram, we have a tangent that intersects a secant outside the circle. So the measure of angle 1 will be x degrees minus y degrees divided by 2. In the third diagram, we have two tangents that intersect outside the circle. So the measure of angle 1 will be x degrees minus y degrees divided by 2. Notice that in this diagram, when two tangents intersect outside the circle, the two intercepted arcs together form the entire circle. A secant is a line that intersects a circle at two points. So line AB is a secant. Notice that it intersects the circle here and here. Ray AB is a secant ray. Segment AB is a secant segment. Notice that a chord is part of a secant. In example one, we will find angle measures. What is the value of each variable? In part A, we have two chords that intersect inside the circle. So the value of x, or this angle measure, will be the sum of the two intercepted arcs divided by 2. 46 plus 90 is 136, and divided by 2, is 68. So x equals 68. In part b, we have a tangent and a secant that intersect outside the circle. So this angle measure will be half of 95 minus z. Let's begin by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. So 40 equals 95 minus z. We'll subtract 95 from both sides, and negative 55 will equal negative z. Divide both sides by negative 1, and z equals 55. Pause the video and do you try number 1. What is the value of each variable? In part A, we have two tangents that intersect outside the circle, so this angle measure will be half of w minus 110. Let's multiply both sides by 2, and 140 equals w minus 110. Add 110 to both sides, and 250 equals w. Some of you may have noticed that w plus 110 equals the full circle, so an easier way to find the value of w would be to take 360 minus 110, and that would give us 250. In part B, we have two secants that intersect outside the circle, so the value of y will be half of 110 minus 30. 110 minus 30 is 80, divided by 2 is 40, so y equals 40. In example C, we have two chords that intersect inside the circle. So 35 degrees will equal x plus 30 divided by 2. Let's multiply both sides by 2. And 70 equals x plus 30. Subtract 30 from both sides. 
and 40 equals x. In example 2, we will find an arc measure. A satellite in a geostationary orbit above Earth's equator has a viewing angle of Earth formed by two tangents to the equator. The viewing angle is about 17.5 degrees. What is the measure of the arc of Earth that is viewed from the satellite? We know that angles formed by tangents that intersect outside the circle are half the, different of the difference of the two intercepted arcs. We also know that together this arc and this arc are 360 degrees. If this inner arc is x, the larger outside arc would be 360 minus x. Let's write the equation that 17.5 equals the larger arc measure 360 minus x minus the smaller arc measure x divided by 2. Let's begin by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. 2 times 17.5 is 35. So 35 will equal 360 minus x minus x, which is minus 2x. Let's subtract 360 from both sides of the equation. 35 minus 360 is negative 325, which will equal negative 2x. Let's divide both sides by negative 2, and x equals 162.5. Pause the video and do you try number two. For part A, a departing space probe sends back a picture of Earth as it crosses the Earth's equator. The angle formed by two tangents is 20 degrees. What is the measure of the arc of the equator that is visible to the space probe? Remember, the measure of an angle formed by lines that intersect outside the circle will be half the difference of the intercepting arcs. We also know that the inner arc and the outer arc together create 360 degrees. So since this inside arc is x, we will write the expression 360 minus x to represent the major arc. Now we can write the equation that 20 degrees equals 360 minus x minus x divided by 2. Let's multiply both sides by 2 and combine like terms, and 40 equals 360 minus 2x. Subtract 360 from both sides, and negative 320 equals negative 2x. Divide both sides by negative 2, and x equals 160. For part b, is the space probe or the geostationary satellite from example 2 closer to Earth? Explain. Let's start by drawing an example of something closer to Earth and something farther away from Earth. Notice in the diagram on the left, where the object is farther away from the Earth, the angle measure is smaller than in the diagram where the object is closer to, to Earth. Since the angle measure formed by the tangents was 20 degrees from the space probe, but 17 and a half degrees from the geostationary satellite, then the probe, since the angle measure is larger, must be closer to Earth. There is a special relationship between two intersecting chords, two intersecting secants, or a secant that intersects a tangent. This relationship allows us to find the length of unknown segments. Theorem 12-15 states that for a given point in a circle, the product of the lengths of the two segments from the point to the circle is constant along any line through the point and circle. In case 1, the products of the chord segments are equal. So A times B will equal C times D. In case 2, the products of the secants and their outer segments are equal. So the whole secant, W plus X times W, will equal y plus z times y. In case 3, the product of a secant and its outer segment is equal to the square of the tangent. So the entire secant, y plus z, times the outer portion, y, will equal the square of the tangent, t squared. y plus z times y will equal t squared. 
In example three, we will find segment lengths. Find the value of the variable in circle n. For part a, since we have two secants, we will multiply the length of the entire secant, eight plus six, times the outer portion, six, and that will be equal to the entire secant, seven plus y, times the outer portion, seven. On the left side, eight plus six is 14, times six is 84. To avoid having to multiply with the distributive property and then dividing, I'm just going to leave seven plus y times seven alone. Now I'm going to divide both sides by seven. 84 divided by seven is 12, and seven, y, seven plus y times seven divided by seven is seven plus y. We'll now subtract seven from both sides, and five equals y. For part b, since we have a secant and a tangent, we know that the length of the entire secant, eight plus 16, times the outer segment, eight, will equal the length of the tangent squared. Eight plus 16 is 24, times eight equals z squared. 24 times eight equals 192, so 192 equals z squared. To get z alone, we'll take the square root of both sides, and z will equal the square root of 192. Rounded to the nearest tenth, z equals approximately 13.9. Pause the video and do U-try number three. What is the value of the variable to the nearest tenth? For part a, we have two secants, so we will take the length of the entire secant, 14 plus 20, times the outer segment, 14. And that will be equal to the length of this entire secant, 16 plus x, times the outer segment, 16. 14 plus 20 is 34, times 14 is 476. Divide both sides by 16, and 29.75 equals 16 plus x. Subtract 16 from both sides, and 13.75 equals x, which rounded to the nearest tenth is approximately 13.8. For part B, we have two intersecting chords, so we know 6.75 times m equals 3 times 7. 6.5m equals 21. Divide both sides by 6.5, and m is approximately 3.2. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me in class. Now that you understand all about angle measures and segment lengths, go ahead and try the challenge question. Take another minute to reread the learning goal and scale. Have you climbed any higher up the scale from where you were when we began the lesson? If you did the challenge question, here's the answer.